Hi, I'm Kelly Metzger. I'm a voice actress based in Vancouver and welcome to my home studio. For those who don't know me, I'm Kelly Metzger and I'm best known for playing the voice of Nia on Ninjago. And this is the first episode in my vlog series, Making It With Metzger. So today I'd just like to introduce myself and also give you a little tour of where I do the majority of my voiceover auditions. So some of my biggest jobs obviously have been Ninjago, first in Masters of Spinjitsu. I think we started recording that in 2010. And we just came out with a new Ninjago series, Ninjago Dragons Rising. And it's very exciting that this show just keeps going and going and going. If you haven't watched Ninjago, you might also recognize my voice from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, where I've played the voice of Spitfire, leader of the Wonderbolts. And I also did some, a little bit of anime and dubbing, Buttercup in Powerpuff Girl Z, Pickle Ginger Swing, and a Sparrow in Tara Duncan, amongst other things. Also, I've started teaching voiceover for animation online through Skillshare. If that's something you're interested in and you don't know where to start, I have a link below for a free trial month of Skillshare and there's lots of voiceover courses on there as well as so many other creative classes. Drawing, painting, um, editing, gosh, anything you can think of. It's a really amazing platform and I've been taking lots of classes on there and um, I'm putting up more classes on voiceover. So if you have uh, an idea of something that you would like to learn in the voiceover field or the animation field, comment below because I'm interested in teaching you guys what you want to know about voiceover for animation. What brought me to this closet and being on a cartoon that lasted, oh geez, 13 years now? Incredible. Well, I am originally from Edmonton, Alberta and I grew up in a suburb outside of Edmonton called Sherwood Park, which is most famous for producing NHL hockey players. But sometimes you can be an artist in the suburbs and um, it was a nurturing, safe place to grow up. I started taking violin lessons when I was three years old and took them till I was about 13. And after that, I switched to singing and studied singing, uh, classical singing until I was about 23. As well as taking tons of drama and a little bit of dance. And I participated in a lot of community productions as a teenager. I had so much fun doing that. And that really inspired me to want to pursue this as an adult and as a career. I studied English for a few years at University of Alberta and then I got into the Studio 58 acting program in Vancouver, BC. So I moved further out west to the coast and that's where um, I started focusing even more on acting. And after I graduated from there, um, I did some children's theater tours around Canada and the United States and played Anne of Green Gables here in Vancouver, as well as Anne in a little night music for you Sondheim lovers. That was an amazing experience. And maybe around, I was around 26 or 27, I decided I wanted to focus on voiceovers. So what I did is I found myself a coach and we just set out over a few months honing and finding my voices, the character voices that I could do strongest so that I could present myself in a professional way and create a demo that really came out with a bang. Because I had heard that voiceovers were notoriously difficult to get into, so I had the goal of introducing myself like I already knew what I was doing. And it worked. After a couple years of auditioning and rejections, but I kept going and kept going. I, I had a great agent and um, I finally booked um, my first little dubbing shows. And then I think uh, earlier version of My Little Pony was one of my first, what's 
It's called Prelay, where you record your voice first and they animate it after. So that was one of my first Prelay gigs. And then in 2010, I got really lucky. I had an audition for this thing, this Lego thing, and I was like walking up to the studio to audition. I thought, oh, geez, I better look at this. Looked at my audition just as I was walking through the door. Blah, 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 blah. Made some quick choices, went in there, banged it out. You can check out Brent Miller's video um, that shows my audition. And luckily, Tommy, the creator of Ninjago, liked what I did. And, that, and that's how I landed the biggest gig of my life. I am so grateful for Tommy for keeping me in the game. That's my credentials and my history and uh, what's brought me to this closet. So let's take a look around. Um, for people who are interested in voiceovers, they want it and they're thinking, how do I get started? What type of equipment do I need? How much money am I supposed to spend? At the beginning, you don't have to spend much if you don't have much to spend. I still have a very basic setup. This is not broadcast quality. I don't create the product here in my closet. I audition in my closet. So I could definitely use an upgrade, but let me show you the basics of what I have that it gets the job done. Okay, let's talk about insulation. This is just a foamy mattress. I think we got it off of Craigslist. I also have some on my ceiling and um, you can get this on Amazon for pretty cheap. I'll put a link below as well as a link to other equipment that I have. Um, as you can see, I'm surrounded by clothes. It's a nice enclosed space. I've got this pop filter, a mic stand, and I have this Apogee, Apogee mic that's just a USB mic. Now, I've had this for a very long time, like 10 years, and this is not how it's sold. What's going on with this mic is I live by a bunch of cell phone towers. And when all the auditions switched to at home during the pandemic, I was noticing I had a lot of feedback um, in my auditions that I couldn't seem to get rid of. Um, so we tried all sorts of things. So this is wrapped in copper tape. And then we also have some magnets. <laughs> wrapped around my cords, different type of magnets to try it. And it did, it did help a little bit, but there is a slight kind of high frequency in my auditions. Now I booked a job recently and I asked the engineer, like, can you hear that high sound? And he said he could. And I was like, well, do you think that's stopping me from booking jobs? And he said, well, no, it's so slight that what they're actually looking for is the quality of your performance and the tone of your voice. And if, you are what they can have in their head, then that's what's gonna get you the job. But if you have any suggestions of what kind of upgrades I should get, you can put that in the comments. I could use like a compressor and a better mic. I read most of my auditions off my iPad that I got from Skillshare for uh, producing the best new class in their April 2023 Teachers Challenge. So thank you Skillshare for this amazing iPad. I'm very grateful. And I usually just record it. Yeah, USB mic hooked right into my phone and then I edit it on GarageBand. And then after that, I put it into um, a converter app to change it to an MP3. But I keep my setup very simple. Um, I've got a carpet here on my music stand so that my voice doesn't echo. And I also have another carpet on the ground to absorb some of the sound. And that's my studio. Check out the link below if some of these things are um, you think could help you in setting up a basic home studio and I can direct you to the products. So this is the first episode of my vlog, Making It With Metzger. Over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be sharing a little bit of my life here in Vancouver as a creative. Um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about voiceovers and auditioning at home and that and those sort of things. But I'm also gonna be talking about just things that generally interest me and what I spend my time doing when I'm not working. Some of it has to do with my garden. Some of it has to do with making food recipes, kind of urban homesteading. Um, 
and being creative in an expensive city. So I'm just kind of opening up my world to you. And um, if you're interested in joining me on this journey, like and subscribe and um, leave a comment. And I can't wait to get to know you. And I'm really excited. I learned a lot of these skills on how to vlog and edit on Skillshare. So if that's something that you're interested in learning, check out my link below. Or if you want to learn some voiceovers, I'm going to be putting more classes up. And um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you soon.